Sozial Mifelam Maladala University. I'm a member of Success Project led by Marjan. And today I'm going to talk about our work on how to make convolutional neural networks more robust against adversarial attacks. And so let's uh, take a look at how what is a CNN or a convolutional neural network and how it works. This is a sample of a CNN and the task is to receive some input images and classify it uh, among three different classes. Normally convolutional uh, CNN comes with input layer and output layer and some hidden layers. And at the end we have uh, some prob probability uh, that shows uh, that our, our input image uh, depends or, or belongs to which classes. And uh, nowadays, uh, CNNs are uh, common practice in most of AI tasks, such as uh, image classification, language translation, uh, medical diagnosis, and also a lot of uh, different AI tasks. Uh, their ability uh, to go beyond uh, human precision has made uh, these networks uh, or these models a milestone in the history of AI. Uh, but normally, as all uh, invention by the human, uh, they are suffering from some problems that we, uh, today we are focusing on uh, their problem or their uh, vulnerability against adversarial attacks. So, uh, we are going to define what is adversarial attack and how can we make them more robust against these adversarial attacks. Uh, this is a famous uh, image uh, by Goodfellow, uh, published on 2015, shows uh, what is an adversarial attack and how can it fool a deep neural network or a convolutional neural networks. This is an input image. It's labeled by it's labeled as panda with uh, around 58 percent of confidence. Then, by adding some noises, uh, the CNN classifies this input image as a uh, given by more than 99 percent confidence. Which one, which is given, is shown on the image. And uh, you see, to the to human eye, uh, there is no difference uh, between this input image and the adversarial attack image, but by adding some noises that they are some, they are not just noises, they are some uh, some features that they are inserted into this image uh, to make uh, the CNN full, we can uh, we can receive very big mistake output resulted by this uh, convolutional neural networks. So the question is, uh, should we worried about this attacks and this uh, problem that uh, CNNs are suffering or not? For sure, we should uh, at least consider this uh, weakness among uh, convolutional among CNNs. This is another task uh, doing by, by a group of researchers on 2018 that shows by adding some stickers. Uh, to a stop sign, they could uh, fool the system as a self-driving car to mistake, mistake it uh, to a speed limit sign. This is another uh, task uh, done in 2017, uh, uh, studying uh, CNNs by natural perturbation, and they could show that uh, the, the image detection si uh, system uh, would ignore the right image that uh, that showed that there is no human in the picture. But for human, it's obvious that in both pictures we have human on the image. But by adding some perturbations such as rain or dust, uh, we can change or we can fool the uh, CNNs to ignore the human or maybe other objects in the image. Uh, Consider you are riding an autonomous car and you are approaching to a, a traffic light and the traffic light is on uh, green or red, then maybe uh, by adding some st stickers or maybe other perturbation, it, it could 
turn to a red tropic like you know you are aware of the consequences of this uh, problem. So what is the solution? Adversarial. A common solution right now is uh, being a study, a studied a lot is adversarial training and there, we, there are a lot of uh, approaches to do this adversarial training. Uh, on the right, you can see the CIFAR 10 de benchmark data set is a very famous. Uh, Uh, it comes with images uh, in 10 different categories. For adversarial training, uh, some of works uh, has generated 15 billion training samples to train their uh, architecture to make it robust. Or uh, the other approach is to train the network by using uh, adversarial attack image. So you can generate adversarial attack or perturbed image and uh, let uh, your CNN or your architecture to be trained with this attack image. Uh, but the problem with this approach is and the time that you need for uh, training your CNNs. Consider the C410 with 50,000 training images, then you have 3,000 times more uh, images to train your system to make it robust. And also for every data set, you should do this. I mean, if you change your data set, then you have to uh, generate a lot of information and you need a lot of resources and time to, to do this. So uh, our motivation to do this uh, is to uh, study uh, CNNs uh, by changing the architecture. Uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, parameters, a lot of definition and layers in inside the uh, inside any CNN. And according to some uh, papers, uh, we know maybe one of the problems against this weakness uh, about this weakness, maybe it's uh, the architecture of CNN and mostly the activation function inside the CNNs. This is an example of uh, a very uh, well-known architecture named AlexNet. And as you see, uh, in some places, we have some activation functions. After any convolutional layer and also some fully connected layer, we have this activation function. And we are going to study uh, this CNNs by searching for new activation function. And what is activation function? Uh, currently, mm, uh, the most used in uh, AI are not nonlinear. And by adding this uh, mathematical operation, we add the nonlinearity to uh, CNNs and uh, by adding solve more complex problems. So uh, if, you, you, if you use uh, the linear function, then you have old regression models, but we are changing and we are adding the ability to solve these problems by adding this nonlinear uh, activation function. Normally activation function are uh, mathematical uh, formula or mathematical operation that uh, we can apply on the output of this neuron uh, to, to change how they tolerate against the data. A very uh, Maybe the most famous one is the ReLU activation function. Nowadays, uh, almost every uh, architecture comes with ReLU, and also we have different uh, activation function here, uh, such as MISH, SWISH, and other activation function. And as you see, uh, normally they don't do anything special when you have positive values as input, but the difference is the difference comes here with negative information. 
for infinity values, maybe you are turning in every negative information to zero, but here uh, the differences among these uh, famous activation functions. Our approach is to study the CNNs by generating or replacing activation function for better activation function. And uh, the benefits are uh, if we could do this, then our approach is model agnostic and attack agnostic. It's not important what is your model and what is your data set, what is your attack. You can uh, study, you can uh, train your activation, your, your network by uh, using uh, different architecture. And obviously, it needs very a small overhead because you are doing the task that you have done before. But this time you just uh, change the architecture. For this work, we have selected uh, some activation function and also some mathematical operation to study uh, how it works because uh, it's a uh, uh, if, if you increase this, the list of candidate and also uh, other mathematical operations, then you, you will have uh, a big size for your search space. space. So uh, in this step, we selected just uh, this candidate activation function and also uh, those mathematical operation. And here is a sample uh, of how it works if you select two different activation function and activation functions and make some uh, mathematical operations. Uh, the black one is how sigmoid works and this one is how Tanesh works. And other uh, uh, other lines shows how it works when you uh, combine these activation functions. And uh, since our search space is very big, uh, at, at first we started uh, to, to test our approach by using genetic algorithm. Then uh, we found that it's, it could be very time consuming because uh, training a network against data set normally it's time taking. Uh, I mean, with CIFAR 10, maybe it takes one week to train your data your architecture. So we replaced genetic algorithm by simulated annealing and uh, we use some chromosomes to uh, to make uh, to make uh, uh, to, to show uh, how it works and how can we change different or select different values to make new activation function and pass them to the algorithm to check uh, how it works. And here are the results. Uh, you can see the results, but maybe it could, it may be, it's not very obvious, but this is the original uh, sample at the first line. And this one is uh, the image after perturbation with different attacks. This one is by BIM, this one is FGSM, and this one is PGD, different attacks that you can apply on the input image. And, uh, here is the feature map generated by uh, convolutional. I, I don't remember. Maybe the first convolutional layer of the uh, of our architecture. This is the original one. It's obvious that it's uh, similar to the input image, and this one for uh, the standard or the original uh, uh, architecture, and this one. Uh, comes for, from our architecture. In some point, it's obvious that uh, our approach generates better feature maps. So this is the reason it could uh, diagnose uh, perturbed images more uh, better and uh, more precisely. Sorry, what's up? And this is another uh, 
information chart to show uh, the decision boundary that is that is uh, generated. This one is uh, the standard architecture, and that one is the architecture that we have changed. And this this shows uh, the decision boundary. If you look this into this uh, to both data, you see that we have uh, more clear boundaries for uh, information that is generated. But here we have uh, data that it's not so clear and it's not so bonded to each other. And this is the performance of the standard architecture and uh, the, the architecture that we have. Uh, that we have edited and used different activation functions. The, the blue one is for the standard architecture. In this uh, chart, we have AlexNet for MNIST data set with different attacks. And you see how we could uh, make it more robust against these three active these three attacks and uh, the other one is for alexnet with cfr 10 data set which is uh, more complex uh, comparing to mnist and also uh, we could able to make it more robust and the last one is uh, resnet 18 another architecture uh, again, uh, with C14 data set and also attacked by three, those three famous attacks. And uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe uh, we haven't, we couldn't uh, increase the robustness very well here, but uh, against other attacks, uh, we have better results. And also uh, along, uh, sorry, along with uh, increasing the robustness, we could able to uh, increase uh, the performance of the uh, CNNs uh, by adding, uh, by uh, increasing their performance. But this is not our uh, task in this work. We just worked on uh, their robustness, but maybe in future we could work on uh, their own performance by replacing or by uh, changing this architecture. Thank you, and if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer.